Hi, this is Christian. In this video, I'm going to show you some techniques how to uh, help you, you know, debug your code in Android Studio. Okay, so if you're not used to this IDE yet, you know, may, you may not be familiar with some of the tools it, it provides. So here is the app that I created, just a simple app with the empty layout. Now, when you before you open any code, you see um, here. Um, uh, so if you look at the bottom of this page here, it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of small. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. Let me try to, let me zoom it in. Okay, so, so way down here at the bottom. Okay, I'll just pause it here for now. And you see these, you know, tabs down here, to do, problems, terminal, build, inspector, log cat, and profile. profiler. There's one more you don't see here until you run the actual application. Okay, so let me go back to the unzoom portion and let me turn this off hopefully you can see it so the to-do part as you can see if you click on it there's nothing here yet it just says no to-do yes list this is actually really helpful if you um, know how to use it I'll maybe I can show you how to do that the problems here is just to show you the current file you open if there's any syntax problems okay syntactic errors it will list it here and help you can fix that really quick the terminal is just like your console terminal um, this is the same as going to this terminal here Okay, it's the same terminal except it's you know built into the IDE so you don't have to exit out in, in, in switch screens. The build is as you can see here when you run and build your app. So let me just clear this for now. You can see that when when you build your app and run, it's gonna build and then during the building process the compiler will will spit out any errors if you have any here. Okay. The database inspector, um it's for databases, we'll do that later and when we yeah try to connect to the SQL Lite database. The log cat here, as you can see already, some information here. Let me clear it now. Um, okay, you can filter out some log data. Use you use the log uh, class to do that for you. And the profiler here is just basically to profile the current device that you're using. It tells you like memory addresses and and CPUs and things like that here. I, I ran this earlier, so you can see some information here. So usually it should be just blank. Okay, and uh, you can again. Um, look through here if you want to do that but um, um, and then on the right side you have the event log it logs all the events that happen when you in your current app and then the layout inspector is really gives you a another overview of the layout of your um, current layout so again it's not it's kind of hard to see here but if you uh, go and um, run your 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 uh, file you will see the layout here again you probably don't don't need this but the most important ones you need are the log cat and the run, which you don't see here. Okay, which you will in a minute. Once you run it, you'll see it. If it's not visible, you can always turn this on and off um, from the view menu up here. Okay, so if we go to view, under the tool windows, you see all these here. So you can see that the build is here. It's down there. The run is not shown. If I click on this one here, you see that it now shows down here. Okay, so if you happen to accidentally, you know, turn this off, you can just say, you know, remove from slide view, and then you can turn it back on again by going to the view and turn it back on. Okay, so all these are available here. Okay, so now I'm going to go and open the file in the app, a source, and then a main Java. It's a long way again to the main file. So this is what you usually get by default anyway. Now, syntax errors, as you can see, it would, you know, outline here for you by the IDE. We usually mark a red text, uh, color text, and also give you some red squiggly lines to tell you. A as far as you know, as you can see, this is a perfect. No errors, nothing here. This little icon just means like yeah, you're overriding some methods here. Um, what you want to pay attention to is on the right column over here, okay, under this green check mark, you'll see this right column will point out some errors. If there's any warning messages, we'll also point that out. Um, so, for example, if I go up here and just type in something like um, hi, okay, you see that it gives you a red text. Any red text here, usually it means uh, an error. Again, based on the setting, okay, the default setting. If you change the color scheme of your theme, it may be different, but with the default setting, this means an error. You see this is squiggly line here. This is the problem because it's caused by this, right? So it, it's like a domino effect. And then now you look at your lines, your, your code here. You see on the left window, all these have these red squiggly lines underlined, all of them all the way down to the file you have. If you have multiple files, which other files have errors, it will point that out for you. 
So you don't want any of these red things going on. If you do have those, your app will not compile, it will not run, okay? On the top right, you see here we have a, um, a bubble with an exclamation mark and a number three. Now if you hover, it will tell you what it is. If you click on it, notice it opens the tab down here at the bottom says problems. It tells you what those three problems are. And usually if you fix the very first one, it solves the problem. Notice I, you may not see this first because I turned this on. Okay, you may see just like that. If you click on it, if you double click on it, double click on it, it will take you to that file in that location. And you can fix that problem. And then on the right side, the left side of this, you will see an icon that has a, you know, shaded um, columns here. If you click that and it will open the terminal here for you as well. I mean, the editor here. The benefit of this is as follows. Let's say I have, you know, have a really large file, large code, and some way down here I'm in line like, you know, line 50 or something, do some stuff down here, okay? I just put some comments here, right? I'm doing some stuff down here, whatever it is, and I have a problem in my code. So I don't want to lose this place in my line of co my code. Because if you go and click, if you double click on this line, it takes you, your cursor back to line 9. Once you fix the problem, okay, where was I before, right? So you lost your place. Now, if you were to use that, okay, so I was here again. If I use this editor over here, preview, open that, it will take you to right where the error is, okay? And then now I can just fix the problem, right? If I fix it and that goes away, all the problems are gone and I'm still here just doing what I need to do, okay? So that is really useful for that, that purpose. Okay, so um, again, what I showed you earlier was if I put a, a message here okay it tells you that error and if you try to run it you're not gonna it's not gonna work so let's say you, you're not aware of that and you try to run this application okay what happened is that during the build it's gonna crash so you can see that now on um, the build tab has been activated it tells you what it is and also points out exactly what what needs to be done or fixed sometimes I mean it's not always correct but um, you may not see this, yours might look like this, okay? And you have to scroll all the way to the right to see everything here. So I recommend you turn this little um, a soft wrap on so that you don't have to scroll all the way. You can see your line of code and the errors, and it will tell you the error is, it says illegal start of type and then override. It doesn't tell you much, it just, it's like, um, it, it thinks that this is a data type, okay? If you remember how to code, you know, you do something like, you know, int i, a like that, right? So this one here, it doesn't matter where you put it. You can put it down here. It doesn't matter. As long as you put a semicolon, then it will terminate the statement. If you don't do it, it thinks that it's still continue on all the way here. So you have an error. So that's what it tells you. It's a type. This is a type. It thinks that the high is a type, and this is a variable of that type. That's what he's trying to tell you right here. And then on the left side, so so before the build fails, okay, so you watch out for the build information tells you here. And then and let's go back to the problems again, the same as before. And if I tell you it's all that, right? If you look at the little light bulb here, it shows a quick fix. It, it suggests that, hey, you should fix this. So if you click on it, it says, create the type parameter high okay if you if you accept this it's trying to fix it for you and what did you see now it, it causes some other problems but it fixed this now it changed also your class name main activity and with the angle bracket and the word high in there okay this is known as generics if you're not familiar with generics you may not understand what this is but it's trying to say that this is a data type that is, doesn't exist you can make this a generic type now, usually in, in, you know, type, this you follow the letter T, and you use that in your code, like T of um, sum is something like that. It's a generic type. If you remember using array list, right, when you create an array list, you always use the angle bracket to pass in a data type. So the array list stores numbers, strings, or whatever it is. That's what it's trying to fix it for you. Okay? So um, that's just one really common um fix this in here okay so so we saw that that's the error and then 
let's say that um, you know if I go in here again if I mistype the letter S here okay I use a capital letter and then again tells you in red anything you see in red here again it's an error syntax error usually uh, or something is not available a class is not being imported right um, you've done that before if I were to do like a text view and then you know a right you see that um, it this one it, it imports automatically which is great but something that's not import automatically like um, maybe view view okay you see that it's not imported so I have to do that import that you know that already it's the same idea here similar thing so I did that and it tells you again on the right side there's a red error it says cannot resolve the uh, method set content view okay it, it gives you a suggestion should you create a function for that if you click this it will create a function for you using this as a function which is you know may or may not be what you want but in this case we don't want that right so again if you see this if you're not sure if you're trying to run this um, it will also you know capture that in the build so again the build called that it's illegal you cannot find this symbol meanings this function this or whatever it is it's not found doesn't exist so you have to fix it well in this case it may be difficult if you don't know the rules um, you all the classes and functions in here so um, I mean once you know that you know but if you don't know then it could be a little bit tough but anyway so we we know that this is not allowed it's not part of the function so we fix that okay and then say I also use a different activity I call activity 2 right it doesn't exist again red okay so that's one thing it can tell you now the next thing that usually happens is so so you see syntax errors are um, easy to fix the the easier the more difficult ones are the uh, logic and runtime errors okay so let's say I have a total uh, a um, integer total is equal to you know one divided by zero okay we know that division by zero is not allowed okay in in Java and JavaScript and other languages may be okay they will actually you know um, uh, set a type to infinity but in Java we know it's not allowed so therefore of course the IDE doesn't know that okay until you run it okay so this is not a syntax error it's a it's a runtime error okay when you run uh, so for example if you never run this line of code in your program you know it, it, it's no problem until you reach the syntax this line it will crash so let's create my create my screen over here close my console and um, I go to the run again just to make sure nothing runs okay so now I'm gonna build and run this app all right so you can see it you, you saw very quickly it loads and then it tries to load it and then it turns it off okay um, just to make sure that it does work let me comment this out again okay let me turn this off, the emulator on okay so uh, let me just lock this in I can't lock it in um, dark pin okay so here we go again if I uh, run it one more time you will see that it tries to load so now it's okay because now in the app it's running right no problems now again if I turn this back on if I save and run it again you see that it tries to load and then there's a problem is that your app closed right you may see this message or you don't see it at all the little white flashes and then it goes away that means there's a problem in your, in your app it doesn't tell you here there's no red lines no nothing to tell you so you can't know what that is so how to solve the problem is by checking in the run tab down here okay the run tab tells you pretty much everything when the app is running so let me you know maximize this a little bit more and has a lot of information down here okay everything that runs in the app every time you click something it, it loads the activity it does something you know it generates all this information here um, so you want to look for anything that's in red usually in red again so if you scroll up and down you will see that at the very bottom you see a bunch of red text okay and that's usually problems um, then if you scroll up from this line because one problem will crash your app right away and if you scroll up it tells you right where this blue line is it says in the main Java file line 15 that's what this means if I click on it 
it takes you right to that line. And the arrow is usually right above. It says division by zero. Okay, it's caused by division by zero. It's not allowed. And if you keep scrolling up, this is going to repeat again. But I will tell you until like all this blue and cold text, those are okay. It tells you here that, that the uh, Android D, uh, VM virtual machine was shut down here. It's a fatal exception, fatal error in the main program. And it traces down here to show you where the error is. The um, error is caused by, again, it's unable to start activity uh, because of this exception. right? So this is hard to find, but if you scroll down until you find this blue text, it tells you exactly where it is in your code. And the error is right here. So you need to fix that. Okay, so if you see that you know, your app is running fine and, and there's no problem where you don't understand why it's not running, check in the run. And because it's really hard to see, this is the run is like the console and and, and uh, other IDEs like you run um, you know Eclipse, you open the console or Visual Studio code in the console, that's what you see here. Okay. So if you write out statements, um, it will also show up here. So let me let me show something here. For example, if I put uh, a correct number, let's say, you know, 100 uh, divided by 10, right? So I'm going to get 10. And if I want to print out the total so I can see in the console, you will call this function called system.out.print, println. And then you put here some text, total, and then you put here concatenation operator and then total here. So it will print total is 10 in this case to the console. So I fix this error, so therefore it won't crash. It will load the app and then now let me clear my console down here. Clear all, right click, and then run this again. Okay, so it loads the app, everything looks good. It goes and creates this app here, it runs everything in the background, and then it should stop at some point. Okay, so now you can see that you know everything looks good. No red things in here, right? If I scroll up. There are no red things, okay? But it's, it's a lot of things going on here, and I'm sorry if I scroll too fast. If you go up here, you should see, um, go through the top, okay? So, I uh, couldn't see the, the, the black text. You should see the black text in here. Um, Where is it at? I know it's in here somewhere. Uh, it's a message that we print out. And usually at the it should be at the bottom. Yeah, that's that's a lot to find. So let's go down here again. Well, it's um I know it's there. It's kind of hard to find. Uh, which is why, you know, you want to use the um the tag. So if I go here again, I'm gonna just turn that off, and then open it again. Okay, and um. Well, I don't see it uh, for whatever reason. It's not shown here, but your your system I should print a message here. Um, let me try to clear that again, and then I'm gonna um, just rerun the app. Okay, so we go again. Yeah, that's I think that's after the fact. Let's go all the way to the top again. Uh, okay, a new message out here. It launched successfully. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing the message um, for whatever reason. It should be here, uh, which is why it's so hard to find. As you can see, you could you you find it should be out there. I'm not seeing it. Uh, so that's why um, we talked about. Let me close this. The log. Okay, you can see it's hard to hard to do that. So the log, if you remember, log dot d, and then you pass in here a a flag, a filter variable you can look at. So for example here, just data maybe. Okay, and you pass a string. Is I want to print the total. I want to print this message here. So you can put it here like this. Okay, and then the log need to be imported. So let me import that. Okay, so now I can track this data um, easier in the run. Okay, so again, if I run this now, 
let's rerun the whole thing again. Yes. Okay, so if I go to the log cat, you will see that in the log cat it's much nicer. Again, it has a similar stuff. It's really hard to find that. It should be in here somewhere. It's hard to find. So that's why I use the data as a filter. I can add in the search box here for data. I only look for that data. Okay? And um, because other data are here too, I should make it more unique. But uh, let's see. Let's try and run this again one more time. Okay, so you see now that it filtered out all the things I don't want. Again, right click clear. Okay, do one more time, run. Okay, there you go. You see that now this is what I have, right? I filter everything out. I just want to see that this is working correctly. My calculation is working correctly, so it shows up here, and that's what it's for. So you can create a log of other stuff, log data, log events, uh, users information, whatever it is. You filter here, it will give you that output here. So instead of going to this, it's really hard to find. You use the log data to do that for you. Okay? So that's for that purpose. Um, so the next thing I want to show you is you can actually um, set uh, points in your in your code to debug it. And let me go back to this again. Let me close this for now. So let's say you can trace your code. Okay, you can trace line by line and see what happens. So if you have a lot of code and you don't know what's going on, instead of hand tracing, it's really hard to do. You can, you know, set a marker here. So on the left column here, right in here, you can if you click on it, it gives this little red circle here. It tells you that when the application runs, when the uh, you know header reaches this line, it will pause execution at this point. From here on, you can step through line by line of code. You can see what's going on. Okay. So if you aren't sure, you can do this, and then once you find the culprit of the error, you can stop there. So let's say I'm going to pause right here when I reach this line. And so when you put this here, you to, to make this work, you have to click on this debug icon here, the little bug. So if I go and click that now, yeah, I'm going to restart everything from the app again. Okay, so waiting for that to bug, and so here it is. You'll notice that when it runs, it pauses right here at line 14, exactly where I put the marker on. And down here, if you look, it loads that debugger frame, and it tells you at line 14 you're here, and it also tells you some variables here. This refers to, you know, uh, the current object. In this case, it will be this, uh, this activity, main activity object, right? And then the save instance is null, so it knows that because we already executed this part, right? So this one has no data saved into the instance, um, so nothing there. Now, if I scroll down and look at these icons here, one of these is a step over, step into, you know, for step into. Uh, the step into means um, if you're calling a function, then it's going to go into the function and it keeps going down until you reach the end of the function, you come back up. So that may or may not be what you want. So if you step over, then it just means run this statement, and then doesn't matter how many functions down there, just skip those and come back up. Okay? So I'm going to click this step over, and then now I'm going to the next line. So at this point, I you know added the view. I forgot to show, see here, but you can see that um, the view has been created here. I'm now running on line 16. Okay, if I go again. It tells you that my total has now been created. You can see it's visible now in the variable, and it has a stored um, value of 10 already. Okay, so next thing is going to print this out to the console. That's been done, and then next is log out to the cat. Okay, so if I go to the cat, you see that um, right now there's nothing here yet, right? So let me minimize, maximize this. Let me clear the console for now. There's no data here yet, but I go back to the bug. If I step through it, it it executes the line it should be added to the log if I go back to the log you see that's now added here okay so you can step through you know your code line by line this way and again if you are done then now you're back to you know this because I it, it loads the activity now and then it keeps going until whenever you stop okay so you can just you know dub uh, stop this and then you're done. So that's a tool to help you debug your code line by line. Okay, put a marker here and it will do that for you.
Okay. Well, um, there are many more, you know, uh, errors um, can, that can tell you. One more thing I want to show you for a common error that you might have is the following. So let's let me turn this off. Let's go and create a second activity. I, I'm just going to copy here. Okay. Go to the res uh, layout, and I'm going to copy here. Just Control C, Control V, and and I create this activity main two. Okay. So now. This main two here looks exactly the same as the one, but I'm going to go and create some variables in here. So let me go and then I'm going to uh, use this text view, give an ID, ID of um, txt, okay, uh, you know, input, or maybe just put um, hello, okay? That's the ID I give to this second view. The first one doesn't have it, okay? The first one here has no ID. As you can see, it should not have it which is fine. The second has this ID. Now in the code over here, if I want to access this view, so I'm in the main activity and so if I go here and if I try to get the data from that view, so I go text view, right, and uh, TV here is equal to, uh, you know, text view. Let me cast that to find by ID or dot ID dot you see that text hello is here even though I'm using the main activity okay so it, this tells you that it doesn't matter which activity uh, which layout I'd use I can have 10 layouts or 20 doesn't matter if I have one unique ID called text ID all those IDs will be visible here and if I try to access this thinking that this is from the main activity uh, layout as you can see there's no problem here if I try to access this and run it, right? You will see that it might generate an error. So again, go ahead and run this app now, and we'll see what happens. Okay. So that's fine because it, able to access that. So now I want to do something with the text view. I'm going to overwrite this text view with a new text. So usually you can use the set text, TV that set text, change the text to high. Okay. So let's save this again and rerun. And now again, right, back to the problem we did earlier. Nothing runs, no error in your code, no red lines anywhere at all. Just have a warning here, but that's nothing uh, critical. So you can see that again, back to the error. How do you know this? You cannot find it, and here you have to go to the run. Look for all those red lines again. It will tell you, usually in the bottom, again, tells you down here. It says, um, here again, line 21. If I click on it, it tells you line 21 here. It says the error is no object reference. Okay, it's trying to call the text view dot set text, but it's no. No means it's, it does doesn't find this object. So therefore, you have to kind of be careful with this because you know ID doesn't tell you much more than it just tells you here. But you know that this exists, but it says it's no, it's not there. Well, because you're running the main activity when you run this in the um, in the running mode, you know, it, it connects to the main activity file, which is, it's going to look in here, and there's no ID matching that. Okay? So because you pull that from here instead. So that's something you want to watch out for when you run your code also. Okay, I think that's enough for now. Um, I know it's a long video, but um, I hope you'll uh, find this useful. If you have any questions, if you, you know, have other things you want to um, review, please let me know. Thanks.